back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped, uh So promise you don't want no Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast where we always keep it 100 with you. I am your host, Harrison, and today I got the honor of being joined by another Nashville dope MC. Um, but we have the one and only Mr. Mike Floss here for joining the show with us today. So, how you doing today, man? What's good, man? How you feeling? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. It's, uh, everything is going good, man. I'm glad to see uh, a lot of prospering things going your way, man. So I appreciate you coming to the show. And um, it's been a long time to making. So um, I wanted to give you a chance just to uh, you let everybody know who Mike Floss is. Uh, I'm Mike Floss. I'm a hip hop artist, community organizer here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, basically, just trying to, you know, live a cool little lifestyle, man, and, and keep the community in the forefront of my mind with everything i do okay well definitely are doing big things for the city of nashville definitely from the music standpoint and the political standpoint and just the i don't know if it's considered philanthropy or i just know you're very active in the community so um that is very inspiring to see um what kind of got you started in the rap game rap i mean it regular story rapping on the bus nothing you know nothing out the ordinary you know my dad was a musician but you know, just growing up, being black, you gonna you gonna write a verse at some point. And I just so happened to write some good ones, you know, and I stuck with it. Yeah, I remember when um, well, the first time I seen your dad, he was playing the saxophone in one of the Black Nashville assemblies, and um, I know you said he was a musician. Was there anybody else in your family that was uh, in the music or made it in any type of singing? Not really. I mean, I think my uncles play, you know, instruments and stuff like that. But as far as people taking it seriously. Um, not, not too, not too many more. Got you. What, um, can you play any instruments yourself? Yeah, I played trumpet for a long time. Um, oh, I played okay. piano a little bit too. Yeah. When you, um, when you do, when you do your music and you're rapping, are you, uh, do you have a part where you kind of put your own music in there? Like maybe go play a verse to record that or put one of your own special, um, what is it called? Signature sounds on it because you ain't no samples for yours. That's, that's a floss. That's a floss tool. I mean, I think, I, I think, I think my fingerprint is pretty much on everything. Um, mm -hmm. pr when it comes to production, I produce too, but I also work with a lot of dope producers. So I don't too much do the instrumentalist thing on my music, but I will, I will kind of guide and um, say like, oh, okay, maybe we need to have guitar here. Or maybe we need to have, you know, different, different things to come in to keep it interesting. Yeah. No, I got you. So what would you kind of say your rap style is comparable to in the game now? Oh, uh, that's a hard one. Um, damn, I don't know. Uh, I think now I'm, I'm really kind of like in my own space. I think coming up, I like Jay. I like Jay Z a lot. Um, I, I love the new Kendrick album. But I think I'm not too sure I can think of anybody that's kind of like, I mean, I, it's definitely like lyrical, you know, it's definitely like um, good songwriting, you know, and it's, it's honest and it feels genuine. Um, so anybody with those, you know, accolades, I can I can get in the mix. Yeah, um, I've heard contraband, so I would have gave, um, I would give you more of a crit just from a sense from the beats that you pick and the content that you do put on there. Um, it has a message, but then you also have your business, but you know, you are heavy into from, from listening to it. You are heavily into lyrics that make you think and lyrics that just not putting lyrics out on there just to say something, but lyrics with a purpose. So um, when I, when I heard, when I heard that, I'm like, this is giving me crit vibes because you know, you listen to Return of Forever, Catalactica, you know, even um, 1999 is is taking you back. But it's every lyric has a imagery into it. So um, that was I was one. Um, that was who I seen from from you when I was thinking of it before. Um, I had to kept, go back and look and make sure it wasn't crit. But uh, mm -hmm. it's definitely it's definitely a good. Also, like the the beats that you do use, they kind of nostalgic. It still fits now, but they give you kind of like uh, 
if you think of how like uh, MC8 was on that Menace to Society song or even listening to um, Big Pop or something like that, those those beats weren't on it, but just the vibe that I get with listening to those times, just listening to like when MCN was out, you got something to say, you know, versus like now a lot of times, um, people got you uh bet you can't do it like this get millie rock like you know what i'm saying it's just it's, <laughs> it's only catchy for the purpose of a dance or a lot of things are now tick tocky you know so um yeah. i definitely like just getting into that vibe you know i always call it a, or actually i think of if you think of baby boy when um jody is or snoop is in there and he kind of just smoking and like the smoke is going up you can just kind of tell he's just in a zone to relax so um, I can give you Kendrick vibes too, just because, like I said, it's a message to say. Plus, with your regular songs, but um, yeah, I did want to ask you, um, kind of with the deal for street hip hop, uh, gangster music, and everything with the whole Young Thug, Lucci, and um, that situation going on. Mm-hmm. You see, you notice that a lot of police are, or district attorneys, whoever, are going back and using lyrics, and it's not even just them. You know, why am Melly? um i think that got taxed on or somebody even though he's not a rapper but with this era of kind of i guess sweeping out street rapping and uh gangster music like that do you feel like this is kind of that lane to bring back that backpack era of rapping where you had cuddy you had um early wale before he signed mmg you had big sean on uh finally famous you know that's that era where that where that uh kind of where that time came in no no, I mean, I think I think everything plays its role. You know, everything has its purpose. I think a lot of the stuff that's going on with Thug and, like, the way that they're trying to use art in, in criminal cases is, you know, wildly racist and anti-Black. But I think, um, man, I think everybody, I think now the way that music works is there's so many options, right? You got music from every every single city in the world. There's rappers there. And they're influenced by different people. And I think there's space for everybody to create their own environment and their own little ecosystem around them and do what they want to do. I just think very, very few people are bold enough to say, I'm going to follow my own identity. You know, and mm-hmm. I think that's the, I think that's, that's what I stand on. And however people want to categorize it or group it, you know, that's, that's on them. But I think for me, I'm just trying to create my own space and I'm trying to I'm trying to be as authentic as possible and live the way I want to live on a day to day basis. So, um, yeah, I think I think a lot of them artists is dope. I think Thug is one of the best rappers in recent times. But um, as far as I go, I just want to continue to build my own space. I got you. Um, I just had off the top of my head. It kind of brain farted me. Um, do you feel like with this happening now, do you feel like there's probably going to be a surge of people lying? I always kind of wondered, I was like, okay, now that they know that um, the police are using this to indict them, do you feel like when you see all these other rappers, is it going to be harder to take it? Or do you feel like they're going to probably start going a lying route versus maybe being explicit of what the content of their lifestyle is? Or do you feel like it's detrimental to rap? Ma'am. Beyond rap, I think it's detrimental to black people. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they're not doing this to death metal acts. They're not doing this to rock and roll artists. They're not doing this to country artists. Um, th- those laws are specifically targeted towards rap music, and rap music is predominantly black music. So I think what's going to end up happening, hopefully, is that these, these uh, bills get passed that won't allow those things to be permissible in court. And people that may be able to maintain their freedom of expression however they see fit but also niggas is lying now anyway you know whether that's gassing up the street life or reducing it so i mean it, requiring somebody to be 100 percent honest in their art and not allowing them to express themselves however they see fit i'm not really on that i think people need to show up the way they want to show up but i do think um we can still we can still be able to see through what's real and what's not yeah um i noticed when you said earlier of being authentically um i'm sorry 100 percent genuinely authentically yourself and your mm-hmm. um music i noticed that did ring true because when i met you know you jamel and all y'all when the first time we met it was a lot of similarities from it seemed like and i talked to my best friend i was with there it seemed like we were the guys or y'all were the guys when y'all were younger that may have done things that weren't in the norm 
of the school times, but you genuinely stayed yourself. And so once you got older, all the stuff that was kind of superficial um, panned out or, you know, it was never trendy. But you all you guys were all still uniquely yourselves from start to finish. And I noticed that you're in the fashion, um, you're in the art you are into political agendas and making sure that the black voice is heard throughout the community. And so um, I've noticed like um, you kind of have, you're not a one strict pony, you know what I'm saying? You are a musical artist, but it's kind of like you took what people said would not be the norm. And then when you kind of got older, you took that same mantra and was like, you know what, I'm gonna showcase it in a flower sort of way. Cause so many petals of Mike, you know? And um, I think that is, probably what I would feel is the next wave of like how we kind of teach anybody. You know, I think it's real. You were talking about the black agenda. Um, and I know you, you know what happened with, um, I'm gonna stick to sports before I switch to the, the serious stuff, but I know you kind of know what happened to, uh, I don't know if you know what happened to Dion and Mike Saban and all that with the whole NIL situation of um, basically one of the players had decided to go to Jackson State and Nick Saban had a problem with it saying they got paid off the players. And so now that it's trendy to go to maybe these other schools, you see now that all these white institutions like the Alabamas, the um, Florida states, all these are now having a problem with us kind of bringing back um, our own into the community, going to HBCUs now because it's gotten. And so I was just kind of wondering to bring it back full scale. Do you feel like with kids now, you kind of want to be that avenue of being yourself as long as you can be because when you get older it's easier to get a get around the bout because you've never changed who you are i'm assuming yeah i mean yeah that's loaded um i think i think kinda zip, i kind of zoned out forgot i was asking a question for a second but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah i think on the as far as like growing up yeah i was always i mean Bro, I had 14 backpacks when I was in high school and every different color to go with every pair of shoes I had. You know what I'm saying? Like I had, I just, it was just, it was ridiculous how many pairs of shoes I used to buy and just like being into stuff and just like, like nerding out about it. But, you know, we was wearing SBs before niggas knew what SBs was, and wearing skinnies before niggas knew what skinnies was. So it was, it was always more so like a taste thing. You know, I always just had a certain taste level and an approach that I wanted to, that I wanted to live like. It wasn't like um, it wasn't like trying to be nothing. It was just like I'm into this and I'm confident enough to express that publicly. You know what I mean? And, and it just grew. And fortunately, like the stuff that I was into evolved and grew at the same pace, you know, or faster than I did. And I just always kind of stay ahead of the curve because that's just the way my mind works. And um, I think when it comes to that the the interesting thing about that when you connect it to the sports and the name and likeness and, and all of that it's like or even like the kids that play in that overtime league it's like now the, at an even younger age they have an opportunity to be like yo if i don't even want to go to the league i can go ahead and start like monetizing my ability to be a basketball player when i'm 15 16 years old i can have merchandise and i can have you know, content online and games that exist outside of the the public school or AU structure. And that's, I mean, that's the goal, I think, for all of us is like being able to have the option to be fully independent and successful at the same time. Um, and, and, understanding, and understanding that the value that you're bringing to a space, whether they tell you that it's there or not, the understanding that it exists and it's nine times out of 10 way more than whatever it is they're telling you it is mm -hmm. preaching but uh, are you all assigned to a label or are you independent i'm not signed i'm independent okay so do you feel like labels are kind of dying out in reform of um rap just because go ahead i'll let you answer. i don't think they're dying out i think i think the old record label model is dying out mm -hmm. um, the record deal model is dying out because it just doesn't apply to the the infrastructure that exists today. So mm -hmm. I think the labels are still going to be there because they have so much capital and so much resources and such large staffing abilities that 
they're still there, but the, the structure of how they operate and how they function is changing. And people that can accept that change and move forward will continue to will continue to stay in the space and the people that won't will die off. Got you. So you are very into um, African American art, art in general, African American art and African American history. Um, what age were you kind of introduced to that, and what was the turning point to where you decided to get just more invested in your culture? When it comes to art, we were we were just inundated with it. You know what I'm saying? We had African sculptures in the crib growing up. You know, like a lot of black families do, but the History is still not my strong suit, but I'm definitely into black politics, you know, mm -hmm. and in uh, and the way that affects the world around me. So I think 2020, when, the, you know, George Floyd and the uprisings of that summer happened, that's when I really locked in. And I, and I just like, man, I'm just not serving. I'm not serving my community in the way that I had a capacity to. And I was very passionate about changing that. You know, I was very passionate about getting plugged in and figure out, OK, how can I how can I bring rap into this? How can I help? push the push the movement forward and uh from that that's how i got connected to the black nashville assembly okay and um speaking of history um your album lp is it ep or lp limited play EP. lp ep damn i was cold. i got the p right yeah. so yeah. you got your album uh contraband which kind of goes into the name with which you met, got the album from which you got from um slaves who escaped the line but if you want to kind of explain to everybody else um mm -hmm. what gave you the name Con what, what made you pick the name contraband yeah so contraband was a term that was used long long time ago when during the civil war so slaves would either escape behind union lines or also a lot of slaves were kidnapped by the union to work and build forts and and build um uh or increase the size of the army for the union um so they kidnapped a lot of slaves as well but a lot of them that term was originally used for escaped slaves behind Union lines during the Civil War. So you were considered free, but you was also considered contraband. So even even in a system where they're claiming that, you know, they're pro your freedom, they're still classifying you as an elite, illegal good. So in the modern day structure, I wanted to draw a through line, you know, of how black people have been looking for their freedom by way of contraband since the Civil War, you know, and even before then, just being black in America kind of has that has that uh, asterisk next to it. And it's also just a fly name. You know what I'm saying? It looks good on the, <laughs> it looks good on the screen, you know, and it's, it's, it makes people think and it makes people question. I definitely like the, the font for it. My favorite two tracks are off the, is Giant with my dog Jamel, shout out uh, Jamel, and um, Together. Mm -hmm. Together gave me that uh, old Kanye last call, you know, and even though you wasn't talking on there for like nine minutes, it's just, yeah. You just felt so at that point of the, the EP, you had just felt like you had got everything out and it was just kind of like sitting back mm -hmm. here chilling, you know, so yeah. I definitely think that and on Giant, you know, it was uh, Jamel doing his uh this preaching part, but it was like being had a recorded assembly. So mm -hmm. um, it was definitely a dope EP. I encourage everybody to get it. I know I plastered it on my socials before. Was this your biggest uh, LP or EP? Damn, EP. Was this your EP. biggest EP that you ever had? Oh, uh, I mean, big is a relative term. Um, in terms of numbers, no. In terms of uh, energy and in terms of like impact and the way I feel connected and, and the quality of work and, and the visual content and everything coming together in a cohesive fashion and the way it was rolled out, it's definitely one of my favorites. You know, definitely mm. one of my favorites. But um, I mean, this is an EP in my artist residence with the um, Civil Rights Corps, which is an organization mm. out of DC. Um, and I was the first musician, you know, to do an artist residence with them. So it was exploring what it looks like to do an artist residence um, with that org in this fashion, you know, and I think it definitely shifted the way they're going to operate in the future. So the influence and the impact very heavy very proud of it yeah how long did you get to keep that lambo <laughs> man i just took a picture of, i just took a picture of that in the, uh in a parking garage because it was green i just be my eyes be open for anything i can use for inspiration man i kind of wanted to be like i was like 
I know I was like, I wonder if he's gonna take any more pictures. And I just sit in the passenger seat, just just with like a t-shirt or a hat or something, just just vibing. Like the music ain't even got just just sit there going, you know. I even stand up and do all that, you know. But uh the Lambo was definitely, definitely dope. Have you you haven't done any touring or anything like that, have you? Yeah, I have in the past, you know, pre-COVID, you know, before mm -hmm. COVID, I was doing a lot more traveling, but um uh it's probably gonna pick back up here soon. I just wanna I I'm working on an album in LA. Um, I've been, I've been, that's my main primary focus. That's going to be my big project. That's going to have all of the bells and whistles with it. But as I'm working on that, I'm, I'm wanting to release everything that I got on my computer. So I got another, I got another single coming out in June. I got another EP coming out this summer. Probably got another EP coming right after that. So just getting all of this music out before this album comes and letting people know like something bigger is on the way. That's the goal. I definitely, you know, I'm a, story post the the fuck out of it um <laughs> i want to do i've always wanted to ask um does it seem kind of important to do albums in this climate and I, I um the reason for me asking that is you got clb and you got kendrick's album right kendrick's album is a great album has a lot of, a lot of lyrical content in it but he doesn't have any singles like any promotable hit tracks on there to me in my opinion it's a good album but to me it's not silent hill silent hill is a hit i have to go <sighs> push these niggas off of me like huh, that shit. i'm telling you I, I think is a hit. i think the bars and stuff are good but it's like um you'll get um a c you'll get like laugh now cry later and that one goes four to five six times platinum okay. and it kind of seems like it's more just to put hit this what's the purpose of putting out albums now in your opinion versus mm -hmm. just putting out singles when people don't have the the sense of longevity and kind of letting um songs or albums mature like they used to in the past i don't think that's true i think that's a myth that the industry is trying to push it when their business model is single driven so they mm -hmm. put that they put that idea in everybody's head to make it seem that way i think you know kendrick Kendrick's album did extremely well first week and it's going to continue to stream for the rest of time. And I think um, the, the issue with not doing full bodies of work is that the staying part power of the artist doesn't really exist because the record is always bigger than the act. So if you drop a single and it's huge and everybody loves it, but don't nobody know who you are, and then you drop another single and it's like, I don't even remember that you are the same person that dropped the first one and the next one then then it doesn't really amount to that much when it comes to your ability to tour your ability to sell product and your ability to transition your career into other mediums so i think that's an industry myth man i think um it is an algorithm based discovery model when it comes to putting music out so as an artist dropping singles does uh much better you know on streaming and, and on dsps and on social media, you know, if you don't have the demand from a fan base to produce an album, but it's up to you. You know, I think I think success is the way you define it. If I just wanted to drop singles all day and that was my favorite way of putting music out, that's what I would do. I just I really like EPs right now. You know, I like 15 minutes because it's, it's more than one song, but it still gives you enough desire to want a longer project so i'm just i'm into doing eps right now so that's what i would make i think i i personally this is just mine i think it's just like i've had multiple cars before i had cars i gotta pay a car note for when i had them i was breaking them bitches. i'm talking about oil ain't changed transmission mm -hmm. on blue whatever because somebody was giving my, my pops yeah. gave me a whole new car had a durango had a bonneville had a cadillac had until i got that raggedy ass avenger and i had to pay for it is when i finally noticed where all the dents and everything until I got my new toy outside I I noticed more when I'm paying for it and I think that back in the day this is just my personal part I think back in the day when you had to pay for albums you probably would appreciate it more because you paid for it or you would take more time because I and also I think that time the artists were um putting more into albums versus now I only pay nine dollars a month and i can stream everybody's album and just hey eh, i don't like it i go to the next one which intense make which i'm sorry uh in a sense makes people put out more and it may not be quality but if i put this out i can make more financially so that's kind of why i wonder from that point but there's other ways to make money so that's my thing it's like 
in a perfect world for me, I would I would do everything off uh, uh, sponsorships and collaborations with bigger companies or bigger platforms and give it to the people for free. You know, I would do everything for free that's public facing and everybody would be able to experience it. Free tickets for all the shows, free shirts for everybody. If I could, that's how I would do it. And I would just get somebody else to cut the check for it and we'll figure out how to make it worthwhile on the back end. But I think um, I think you're right. I think when you spend your own money on something and you get something physically in your hand, it does make a very big difference into how you value it. So to me, the the key the key to giving people that is experience based. You know, so doing listening sessions, doing parties, doing shows, doing you know tech integrations and doing all of these different things to where you can get into somebody's physical space and give them an experience. I think that's the only way around that. And I think I'm not trying to scale. I'm not trying to be Drake. You know, I'm not trying to be the biggest artist in the world. I do not care about that. And that sounds like a headache to me. What I care about is like when I look out into the crowd and I'm at a show, I want niggas to feel me. You know what I'm saying? I want to be in front of people and around people that I would want to go hang out with after the show. So that's what I'm trying to cultivate, and that's what that's what I'm bringing to the table. So you probably be- would prefer to probably stay underground then, because Drake's not uh, amazing. But underground has a big following, like Tyler Creator, Crit. Um, I mean, Tyler's not underground. No, Tyler's playing arenas. You know what I mean? I, so if that's that's underground, then that's cool. I mean, I think for me, this this is what it is. I want to like my definition of success is very specific. Mm -hmm. You know, it it involves me being able to travel the world, performing music, seeing the world on the backbone of my art, right? Taking care of the people that surround me and constantly doing more of the stuff I want to do and none of the stuff I don't want to do. So Mm -hmm. whatever that looks like, as far as scale, whether that's me playing 500 capacity rooms or 3000 capacity arenas, cool. You don't think Tyler is? I mean, I, he does. I think his acting is comical stuff. Like the what was the um the group they were in? Um, what was it? I people. What was the Tyler Creator group? I Future. I Future. I think to me, I guess I call it underground and not mainstream is because when you got somebody mainstream like Drake, I don't really you'll you don't have people that may not be fans. You'll just hear something off the radio and it's mainstream versus Tyler. I feel like everybody at Tyler Creator Show knows everything word for word for word. And I think you can still be on, but still be known for the like 85 South Show. You know, they're underground from the main stages of um, top podcasts, but they sell out arenas. Is it underground though, or is it just cool? In the main, and what we call mainstream is cool. Can they both? I, can they both be? Can they both be kind of synonymous with you? You can't be underground and you selling out Madison Square Garden, bro. It's not. It's not underground. <laughs> I don't. I don't. It's not underground. He was underground know. before. You yeah. know, I think everybody has appeared in their career with it. I mean, Drake was underground when he was making comeback seasons, technically. Yeah. So I mean, that's just. I think it's more so about. That's more so a reflection of time than it is a reflection of scale. Like you selling out Madison Square Garden, he's on the radio, he gets he wins the Grammys, he plays all of the television uh uh award shows. Mm-hmm. He can get on he can get on any magazine. He's not Tyler's one of Tyler's a superstar, bro. Like it just feels that way because he's got great taste and the stuff he makes is cool. So you just kind of naturally say, Oh, this is underground because it's actually cool. When the mainstream stuff that people call it, they avoid and calling it corny. Yeah, Un- and, I, yeah. and there's I, way I, more yeah. there's way more corny people in the world than it is cool people. So typically, the cool stuff is a smaller scale. But I think now, people's taste level is increasing in mass because mm-hmm. of social media and stuff like that. So I don't know, man. But one thing for sure, two things for certain: Tyler the Creator is a superstar. He is not underground. <laughs> I, I I like that definition. I, I I look at it from um, like you said, mainstream is conforming, and then underground to an extent. And conforming, mm-hmm. you're still genuinely yourself. So you know he's still genuinely been himself, and he's mm-hmm. won Grammys and stuff. But um, yeah. he's not plastered everywhere except for people that are hip hop fans. Um, but I I, he, I, he I like, has I, a Converse sneaker. He has a line of Converse sneakers that they sell mm-hmm. in the mall. I didn't know he had Converse sneakers. I'm I'm not yeah. I'm not I'm not doubting I'm not doubting his I'm not doubting his numbers. I have Tyler Creator songs. I like yeah. I said, it's just not 
you got to really talk to a musician when you're talking about Tyler creator because everybody okay. be like you don't fuck with it's like, i don't fuck with tyler but okay. they'll fuck with you know migos is mainstream but you know they still got plenty of underground hits but it's just the fact that you really got to sit there and be like nah bro listen to this song listen to this song listen because i know him more in mainstream for the antics you know the tv okay. show him um i future because he was eating bugs you know uh yeah. that's why i can i have to really like with him specifically his music you gotta mm -hmm. say the song names not him the person so that's kind of okay. why i i go from there but i like the okay. point i did want to ask you about the nashville scene okay and that part they put all nashville rappers coming out which basically means it's time to give us our shine and stop overlooking it but why didn't they have you on there i mean the they've cover. done this they've done this multiple times mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying unfortunately you know it's not a it, it's really not a why didn't they have me on there it's it's there's how do i answer this the right way okay so the, the, harsh, for the, show. The, the harsh reality is the Nashville scene did not have the right person do that article, right? And they have writers on their staff that are actually in the hip hop community. So when you have somebody that's kind of an outsider looking in, it's not going to be a very interesting story. They've told this, they've done, bro, I'm trying to tell you, they've done this so many times. And it's kind of a wash story. They tell the history of Nashville hip hop. They talk about Quanti Cash, Young Buck, Starlito. And then they talk about whoever the, the people are who recently put some songs out over the past couple of years. And then they package it up and say, the Nashville hip hop scene is here. It's arrived. But the, it's not It's not a we're beyond a it's here story. You know, it's folks that are doing a whole lot of huge things that um, that we know. You know, we know these people directly and we see it happening, you know. Roe and Brown just played the Nashville Sound Stadium. Like it's not, it's not, it's not a very compelling argument anymore. So I think what needs to happen with the Nashville scene, if they actually want to help push the hip hop scene into the into the forefront more, they just have to actually be ingrained in the culture and know what's going on and choose the right people um, to to cover that story, you know, and also increase the taste level, you know, increase the taste level of the the photography and the way they put everything out and just and just make it better make it cooler and not cram 20 black people on one cover give give folks in solo covers you know what i'm saying it doesn't need to be 19 people on one and one picture it should be like yo rose should have a cover brown brian brown should have a cover you know and just tell his story we're not all one thing so it's a lot of it's a lot of nuance to it and um I don't think it was like a, a me being left off thing. I think, um, you know, cause you know, I've had, I've had my own cover of the Nashville scene where it was mm -hmm. my story. And I want that for all the other artists too, because it's, we shouldn't all be lumped into, into one thing. So they don't do country artists like that either. You oh no, they never see do that in other genres. Yeah. Do they, um, did it piss you off? or uh, uh no 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 it didn't it didn't piss me off i just i just want more i want better for people you know i want this i want our hip-hop community to have a certain level of respect and i want black people to tell black stories that was the thing you, that bothered me the most do you um what did it mo uh i wanted to ask i guess because it seemed like they just ripped off the uh double xl cover which, yeah, yeah yeah which is what i exactly until i saw nashville scene up there i was just like oh nashville taking off um but they just basically copied and pasted the format i wanted to ask you what 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 do you feel that is going to take to get nashville rap the forefront of nashville because right now we'll always be memphis's little brother mm -hmm. well ah it's, no, it's a nuanced thing um i think i think everybody has grown so much over the past like 10 years if you look at this scene in 2012 to now the mm -hmm. level of growth and the people that are still around and the people that have actually been able to turn this this music thing into a career you know and, and, and really gain ground on a national and global scale we exist and um i think what what has to happen is infrastructure and also understanding but we have to have power you know what i'm saying we can't 
we can't expect the natural scene to be the thing that does it. It's not going, it's just not the way it's going to work. It's going to be at our own hands of our own will of our own doing to create the right energy because we're the only ones that know the story he lived it, created and experienced it. So I think for us to continue, for us to continue on this journey, all it takes is us getting better at what we do, you know, continuing to go outside of the city and get more experiences and learn more things, do good business. Um, and uh make incredible music you uh are you in the comics uh i was once upon a time man are oh, you about to not not recently yeah about to call me lame as fuck on the low but um <laughs> i was about to say um what do you think do you do you feel like y'all can just make a nashville illuminati because me personally i want to get rid of that country s- s- moniker if it's just gonna be music city put it all music not just country music but uh do you feel like y'all can all come together especially the premieres or get buck and Lido and something like that and make a way to like um pull a uh outcast and say the south got something to say do you do you feel like all y'all can get together and be like nashville got something to say do you, do you feel like enough of y'all can come together and do that start organizations anything uh small um concerts url type shit, anything uh i think it's possible i think it's possible but i think what it requires is infrastructure and and a a serious financial investment you know and a lot of times indie artists you know we're not rich you know what i'm saying so in order to really where where our wealth and where our greatest capital exists is in culture you know it's in culture and it's in art so as our careers grow then that opportunity becomes bigger you know it's a lot easier for me to tap somebody on the shoulder and be like hey bro let me give you some game on this this and this and now they get to shave 12 months off of, you know, what I had to do, you know, so we can always grow and share our experiences and help uplift other others. But I think when we talk about combating the country music industry, we're talking about bi- billions of dollars, you know, and that level of investment, I don't know where that's going to come from, but I don't have no issue. I don't take, I don't take no issue with it. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to um, be in no space where I'm not welcome. I'm not trying to prove no point to nobody. I'm trying to do what I want to do. I don't care what nobody think. I don't care what nobody think it look like. I don't care about none of that. What I'm trying to do is live the way I want to live. And a lot of the vanity in the, in the outside facade of it doesn't really matter because if we, if we, let's say we get together, not even get together, but let's say we somehow have this name now of like Nashville hip hop. If we don't treat each other right and if we don't if we don't take care of our communities and if we don't grow together and and have a certain level of respect and some mutual um some mutual mutual guidelines of how we're going to be in community with one another it's going to fold anyway so my focus is how are we going how are we going to be as people together you know we can figure out the rap stuff that's easy people's going to grow your career's going to get bigger the music's going to get better show opportunities come money come and go all of that but how are we going to be as people at the end of the day if we can build a foundation on that then we can do anything but outside of that trying to start with just like conquering that the outward visibility i don't think that's going to work i think that's going to fail every time i got you i think i think because there's so many different kind of rappers in nashville you know you'll mm-hmm. always is it in memphis at least it, it's like everybody has the same type of rap style lyrical content mentality everything so it's easier to go but when nashville it just seems like it's so many different styles everybody wants something different than mm-hmm. in their rap message you want stories uh people putting history in it. somebody might want to talk about money cars holes and mm-hmm bitches you know what i'm saying excuse me women i don't say that this now but um but it's just i feel like that probably be the hindrance because nashville is just very diverse that's kind of why i call it the illuminati if you look it up in the comics it's, it's a bunch of different comic book characters they all sit at the top of the throne but like even if it was like a url type stuff like a battle rapper bring your hottest motherfucker here we'll have them rap against the hottest um person in nashville battle rapper or bring your hottest song and you do it like a versus just to kind of talk our shit just to get noticed or something but yeah. um i don't know it's what just works, every go ahead i think i think what works better than that though is just being like yo i'm mike floss i'm from nashville tennessee i got and i have incredible music 
you know what I'm saying? I think that's more than enough. I don't think we have to create any structure with like a chip on our shoulder. I think as long as we individually do well and we work together and we got respect for each other, that's that's inevitable. Because pretty soon it's like, oh, okay, well, we just seen Mike Foss on da 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 da. And then we seen Roe on this, that, and the third in another space. And we seen Brian Brown on this. And we seen Black Sun on this. And we seen AB on this and Tim Jin on this and Daisha McBride on it. Once you start doing like that and everybody keeps like, yo, I'm from Nashville. And it's not even like this forced agenda then that's when I think it actually genuinely connects and people say, oh, wow, we need to really tap in because it's too it's too much stuff that I like coming from this place. So now I'm doing it. Now the listener is doing it. Now the, the people that build infrastructure or the, or the corporations or people who have money to invest in it, now they say, okay, let me go figure out what's going on because I'm late. So I think my main thing is just everybody being exceedingly well, but also everybody being in community with one another. I would definitely respect that. So I def I wanted to bring it to the Black Nashville Assembly. One of the founders mm-hmm. started it up. Um, we had Jamel in here. We know it definitely started to pick up with uh, after the George Floyd incidents, and we wanted to make sure we were getting laws, legis- legis- legislations, and mm-hmm. um, guidelines and stuff for the Black Nashville community. Um, I wanted to ask... Is it hard separating Mike Floss, the rapper, from Mike Floss, the Black Nashville Assembly member? Or no, it's the same. Me? It's the same person. Like what I do with the Black Nashville Assembly is heavily invested in the arts and heavily invested into, you know, having cultural cool. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. like I'm the same exact person everywhere I go. So it don't, I don't really have any issues separating. I think maybe just the time management of it is probably the hardest part. But other than that, no, I don't I don't feel no no type of dissonance in my mind with the recent domestic terrorism that went up in Buffalo. uh, What initiatives or what has this sparked anything new that y'all kind of want to push? Because I'm not too long ago. It was a white guy on the interstate that was um, had a weapon out and they took all day to shoot him. And I'm not sitting over here saying everybody got to get shot, but you notice that a white person can have a knife out to a policeman, don't seem to do anything. He died only because he fired it, but they seem to know what last resort is. And then you have mm-hmm. Peyton Grendon able to go pull a, a living Call of Duty mission with Twitch mm-hmm. and everything, and he seems to make it out. Um, have these things kind of re-sparked what you guys want to push out now, or does it just um stand to the same narrative of just worrying about laws legislation um so you don't have to go down that blf blm movement right so the good thing about the black national assembly is that we built a structure to where we don't have to be reactive right we've proactively been addressing this issue so it's not like we have to switch gears and, and 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 panic because we know that we exist in a white supremacist environment right we know that uh, this country is built on the backbone of racism. So with that in mind, and with us being a black autonomous space, everything that we've already been building points to the same exact points to the same exact direction, which is us having power and having and having um, self governance, you know, throughout our community. So it doesn't uh, and unfortunately, we've experienced these types of traumas so much that for me personally, it, it does it's not shocking anymore. And, you know, that may be something I got to work out in therapy on my own time or, or whatever. But the the reality is, no matter what happens, everything is going to point back to black people being able to have power and, and us being able to control our own destinies and live our lives in, in such a way that's respected and dignified and healthy. So it doesn't change anything that we're doing. Our, our model is exactly the same. Um, fortunately, it ignites a fire in a lot of new people, and we have the capacity to bring more people into the movement and bring more people into the space and engage with them. So that's the, the silver lining to all of these types of traumatic, horrific events is that sometimes it wakes people up. You know, it's, it's so overt and it's so, it's so malicious and so violent and, and disgusting that people say, all right, let me let me go find something to do with this energy that's productive. And we have a container for that. So I'm really grateful that that we have it in place. I wondered um, 
do you feel that you remember that one group that when Black Lives Matter started and they were the gun group? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. NFL, it was like, think, it was yeah. something like niggas with a pistol in, yeah, NWP or something to that extent. <laughs> Do you feel that like with all these legislations and rules? Um, cause I know you also saw the guy that took, I don't know, well, I don't know if you saw it, but did, did you see the guy who had the son who went to the people's house with the whip and then he went to go tell the guy that oh, his yeah, son? I saw that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you saw, um, and you know, he had his gun on him. Do y'all feel that maybe owning legal guns firearms or anything like that would be something that black um bl i'm sorry um black national assembly needs to also educate people on because they have the same laws as white people um mm -hmm. with guns. do you feel like that's something that you know y'all will try to probably push out for protection purposes yeah we're already so we're connected to groups that do do safety and, and self-defense mm -hmm. training so um that's a big thing especially if you're going to be a firearm owner is to know how to handle it and to know what to do with it and know how to be safe because we know a lot of a lot of times a gun goes off in a domestic time in a domestic a domestic environment it's accidental so that's a big part is just the safety the safety aspect of it of knowing how to handle your firearm um but there's other there's other groups in in the city that are doing that work and we and we have um guided our people to those spaces if that's what their interests are it's a very tricky thing you know it's a very it's a very tricky thing to discuss and to and to um push out in a way that's actually helpful so we just try to use tact and be uh, uh and be um responsible with the way we push that message i i i wanted to ask that because um i'm a very tall and big person and nigga, you tower me so really? i just um the the older i've gotten um being in the military the first time i've held a gun before but when you start to do stuff and you know that like it just takes this to um kill somebody with me being yeah. a bigger stature the me moving from nashville and all these different places japan all this i may be cool to some but i'm fearful to other people and i'm right you see me i chill i joke you know so yeah, to me yeah. i don't know what you see so you know that's just the the older i've gotten is just something i've kind of wondered you know like i probably really need to be aware of this and the fact of how so many people are caught off guard getting killed and you get the tyler rittenhouse i think that was his name mm -hmm. he even though he did some bullshit, he technically was covered by the law well we need mm -hmm. to know these same things that they're governed to so i didn't know if that was something you guys were pushing out i'm glad to hear that you are you have an upcoming meeting on the 4th, an assembly on the 4th. Do you want to go ahead and share, tell everybody this uh, meeting? Yeah, we got the Black Nashville Assembly on the 4th. Our assemblies are quarterly, um, so four times a year. We do the assemblies, and the purpose of the assemblies is to identify issues, discuss solutions, and figure out how we can take action on those things. So on the 4th, we're definitely going to be getting into the mayor's budget that's coming up um we know you know on a city by city basis the city the mayor has the power when it comes to making the budget which means your tax dollars whether they go into the schools or whether they go into the police's pockets gets made at that that um at the city level so we're we're going to be going into his budget breaking it down figuring out what our demands are where we want the money to go so we can speak up and, and pro provide some pushback and also get the budget to be adjusted because we know like it is every single time in every single cycle they include increased police spending no matter you know no matter what the case is so we need more people to speak up on that and more people to push back and also more people to run for city council and to run for these positions where you have more power and control over what that budget looks like so we're going to be getting into that on june 4th you know right before coming right up on you know juneteenth so i feel like if you black and you're in nashville you can't be grilling on on juneteenth if you ain't come to the assembly on june 4th that's just how i feel I'm gonna be there virtually, so I'm. I don't know. <laughs> stuff, so no, that you works. Know, That's, that works. Uh, you, you know, know like I said, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping I'm supposed to be back there next month, but I don't know the date yet. So, but I'm I'm coming to another one. It was a uh, powerful. I almost want to say who rock, but um, what's the name of the one she's running for a judge? The black one. Uh, I've seen her. Um, they just she, she, she was a young born. one. She was a young oh, one. She yeah. wanted to press it mental health. Bad. Could there we go bad, yes so i definitely wanted to make sure i gave her a shout out with the correct name um but because she was one of the only ones that i remember 
specifically other than the guy that got there late and kept talking on his what 45 seconds he spent 30 of them telling him why he was late but she was definitely somebody that left an impression on me yeah. i did want to add a quickie um did the um did the blm shit with them keeping all that money kind of hurt y'all's organization in the eyes of other people take the seriousness of it away no because we're very transparent you know and we're very um we're just it's very different you know you can see a lot of people can see through what's real and what's not Unfortunately, a lot of the BLM stuff wasn't handled the way it should have been, even though they got off to a strong start and their comms were incredible. But the, uh, the, the other difference, too, is when you're talking about local organizing, these are people that you, we touch. You know, I play basketball with the people in the Black National Assembly. I'm, you know, we kick it, we hang out. So it's like I'm around people that can actually see, touch, and feel me and ask me questions directly. When you got somebody way at the top, Sometimes the issue with like this nonprofit thing that I've learned from my couple of years of being involved in the space is you get people that it's like they call it the nonprofit industrial complex. They get all of these donations and all of these grants and all of this funding and they get so high up in the sky that they're not on the ground no more. So the BNA, we really outside. Like we really seeing people. We really like having these hard conversations in real time. We really got people walking up on us, you know, saying stuff that we agree with or don't agree with. And we got to deal with that and manage that. And, and it comes with a different level of respect and responsibility. So it's, it's, uh, it's not this, it's, it's just not the same thing. So it doesn't even come across our, um, it doesn't even come across our radar for real What they got so much what they got or they're getting perceived as because we're very yeah. different than what that is. You know, I just, I just don't want, you know, how they say all black people look right. I don't want to be all black organizations look alike. Um, yeah. Who the best hooper out of BLA? Being at oh me I, I no, said, I you? <laughs> no probably chuck probably chuck indigo i ain't gonna hold you for real chuck, I, heard, I ain't hoop with chuck yet but they say chuck go crazy so i'm gonna give it to chuck oh, okay so chuck he said he ain't played you so he don't know if you is adam morrison or you john morant right now so right now <laughs> you're in the middle of proving yourself so right now chuck until somebody put tape out on you you that player on 2k with the gray t-shirt and the sweatpants but, <laughs> So go get your VC up and get your park up, and then we could confirm it. But um, I did want to get some people some some of the hobbies of like Mike Floss. Like, what do you like to do? I know you're into art and you're um, you know into the community and stuff. But what are some other hobbies and stuff that you like? Look, man, I'm playing bad. I'll just pick basketball back up. I played varsity in high school, but I haven't been playing in a while, so I pick basketball up. I'm playing like four or five times a week now. Um, you know, fashion. It's, it's big for me, you know. I really love fashion, and I really, uh, you know, I've start, I've stopped and started fashion lines a few times, and just trying to come up with the like, the best work and the best ideas because I take it so seriously. I almost, I, I have much less confidence in my ability to run a fashion brand than I do with my ability to rap. So I'm still learning that, and uh, playing around with some different ideas and different things I can do. But I'm super into fashion, man, and I'm also, a, you know, a Michelin star chef, so. I got a lot oh, going okay. on, bro. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what's your what's your best meal? Oh, my best meal. Uh, I don't know, man. I've been I've been I've been on the vegan meals lately. I've been on the vegan meals lately. Uh, I, I do like vegan bowls and stuff like that. Keep mm -hmm. it simple. Nothing too crazy. I tried vegan for a month. Um, tell you the two funniest things that happened. One, I was like, these niggas is cheating because this chicken patty tastes just like chicken. <laughs> and this one little self-made steak or whatever i'm like look i'm not about to lie to myself if i want all this i'm gonna go get uh the regular food and then the second is when i came off of it like a month and a half or so i went mm -hmm. to uh applebee's and i think i had like a burger man i got three burgers in and when i say that shit went right through me i'm talking about like a, a, a meat explosion i'm talking about i was on the <laughs> toilet I feel like I'm a, if we weren't out and about, that would have been a butt naked doo doo. I promise you, I'm talking about oh that. My God. It was three bites in. I was like, yo, what the hell? And so um, we was in Japan, yeah. so I wasn't, I wasn't gonna get no uh, money. They couldn't understand if I sued them, so I just kind of let it go at that yeah. point. But um, the food we eat, man, I'm telling you, the food, it'll show you the truth. It's gonna show you the truth. You stop it's eating just, it and then go back, it's gonna show you. It's, it's not even like, well, one, it's expensive uh, to go vegan. Two, because my co-host, he's vegan. And I, I still think that nigga sliding eating a burger. But it's like, it's so complicated, too. And then, like I said, it's just, um, I just got tired of eating shit 
fake if i'm i don't want none of this stuff to be regular food like i don't want cauliflower buffalo wings i want something just without don't be giving me shit and then making okay. me taste this shit and be like it's like drinking a diet soda like they be talking about, oh diet dr pepper taste no it don't it tastes like ass it tastes like cardboard <laughs> but so um that's that a is point, but you ain't had the good you probably just ain't had the good vegan food bro that's probably all it is I, I have some good ones. I mean, somebody want to. I'm I'm cool with eating vegan food. Just yeah. know that I'm going to eat regular food after. I, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. eat food all together. That's so that's that's nothing. Right, right, no right. problem with that. You uh, fo- you watch. I know you play basketball. Do you watch any sports? Like you're a big advocate of football, I'm basketball, not, baseball. Man, I'm not a big sports guy. I, um, I watched the Memphis series. I was sad that Memphis lost, but outside of that, man, I ain't really been watching too much sports. He was like, man, they lost. Hook, turn this shit off. Um, All right. you, in the, <laughs> you in the movies or anything? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love movies, man. I'm a big, uh, I love good cinematography, man. So, top, three. Lives, let's see. top three movies. Mm-hmm. Gotta go, gotta go, Mad Max Fury Road. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, top three, top three. That's narrow. I'm gonna go Spike Lee, do the right thing. Um, and I'm gonna go. I was not feeling that one. Oh, I seen really? it too late in life. I seen it too late in life. Um, okay. Okay. and but I it was because I don't like Martin. Martin's my favorite one, and Martin sounded like this. It just was. Um, I, it's not one of the movies that I should have saw at 25, maybe because I was in a different. Eh, but it was still cool. It's not his yeah. best, Spike Lee. But this your list. It's not his best. Yeah. Name. Uh, three, a third one, a third one. Man, it's so critical. I'm gonna just go with the first one that's coming to mind. I'm gonna go um, Dark Knight. Okay, I get it. So more cinematography than comics. I got you, because yeah. uh, uh, Dark Knight was oh, because of Heath Ledger's performance especially. Yeah. Dark Knight is yeah. like off of concepts of comics. Christopher Nolan at least versus like Marvel is from a comic series. Um, so I did want to play a game with you. Uh, I wanted to get okay. your opinion on verses. All right. So you're a hip hop fan. This should be definitely easy for you. All right. So okay. I want you to give me your who when I give you these, and I want you to give me your why for them. All right. So my okay. first one was for bigger impact. Who was it? Plaz or Travis Porter? And impact. Sound, uh, yeah, impact. Plaz. And then who would you pick? Plaz. Okay. And why? Because Plaz pick? stuck around in the culture longer. Okay. He stuck around longer. Okay. What's a more impactful song? Back That Ass Up or Make It Rain by Travis Porter? Oh, come on, bro. Take it over for the 99 and the 2000. It's not even close. Hey, man, look, I'm just, you know, I, I, I had to throw it out there. Okay. <laughs> uh, we got, um, you, ooh, what I have? we got which song is better or which song is the more turn up? Dreams and Nightmare intro? or march madness gotta go dreams and nightmare because it's just you're gonna hear it you might mm-hmm. not hear march, march madness every time if you out at a function but you dreams and nightmares is coming on bro you can't avoid it i'm definitely i was going so when march madness came out i was like i was like parsley paprika on a on a devil <laughs> egg type listening to future like i knew him <laughs> it was a couple but when that march madness came out and it was just something about that time. Um, one, I won't say what I was doing, but let's just say that what I was doing fit with it the went hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> and um, dreams and nightmare come on at the. I love dreams and nightmare. Dreams and nightmares come on at the worst fucking part of every party. It is when you calm in the fuck down, or they don't play set it off, they don't play gun, whatever walk or something. I'm tired. So then you got to rap all the dreams. And that's one thing. You got to rap all of dreams and nightmare. You got to start from, um, ain't this what they be waiting? Oh my, oh my Lord. Yeah. Then as soon yeah. as you catch your breath, um, got my, what do you say? Um, got what I deserve. Uh, fuck nigga. Oh Lord. Now I got to yeah. turn up. I just got yeah. my shirt to calm down. But, um, March madness is just, that, that middle part, that climax of it, when it, it go to two different ones and then it come back, it was my birthday too. So that's probably why I went with March Madness. Um, you ever, when he played March Madness on New Year's, it's a different type of story. Like, you know how the um, 
the wave of dreams and nightmare come on. Plus, niggas like to like throw hands when hold on, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was. I was like, damn, bro, I just got this t-shirt. Um, I did, and then I wanted to. Oh, this one, Cash Money, um, Hot Boys era or Young Money era. Which one would you go? I'm going Young Money era. Young okay. Money era. Yeah, for sure. All right, and so those were my verses for uh, top five albums out right now. Kendrick, Mr. Morale, um, Pusha T, it's almost dry. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see what else is going crazy. Top five albums. What to else you. came out recently? Um, I haven't heard outside of Pusha T and Kendrick. I ain't been listening to too much else. Uh, Tenor Talk 4, Benny the Butcher. Shout out the niggas that jump Freddie Gibbs. I guess I don't know how you shout that out, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, we're not shouting out niggas. I, I, I don't know how one on twenty. I don't know how twenty. I don't know how twenty on one nigga was admirable, but he still performed. Um, I just hated he gave ap- academics ammo. But go ahead to uh, go ahead. two more, two more, two more, two more. Um, I'm trying to think of who else dropped project. Who else dropped projects this year? Let me see. Uh. You're not gonna like who I say, but I was gonna say um <laughs> I was gonna say the baby and uh NBA young boy. I'm I'm scrolling as I go through. Okay. Um, I didn't hear Mozzie, that, that Mozzie track, but I think that's just a single. Mozzie and uh Rowdy Rich. Um ain't nobody oh got well got most of the see, it's that weird time of the year where it's kind of technically May, but most of the shit that you still listen to came out in November and shit. So yeah. Cause I was gonna say, um, well, you know, Gunner's album wasn't all that. Future the album just came out. Um, we'll just go with that three. I'm not yeah, going. We'll go I'm not with that going. Three. Yeah, we'll yeah go I'm not going. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to let my ratchet side come out with uh, all this good <laughs> inspirational talk. Um, I did want your opinion on Kendrick, and I'm gonna tell you why. As good as his album is, he's just not a better artist than Drake. So I knew he's gonna have this re- response on your face as soon as I said this. So. I wanted to okay. get your opinion on the Kendrick album, and I'm gonna let you know why him and J. Cole will always battle for two and three. Okay, well, you're wrong, but I do also think that uh, music is not a competitive sport. I think, um, depending on what your classification is for number one, the top spot, then that can be debated. If you're going off sales, then yeah, mm-hmm. Drake is a much bigger artist. Not but if if you going on if you going on who's gonna who's gonna live forever in the culture and who's gonna speak to people's hearts the most i think that i think some debate could happen in that space but the kendrick album is crazy um it's it's like i was having this conversation with the homie the other day it's like the album is almost so good you don't even want to listen to it unless you can sit down and listen to the whole thing front to back and yeah. that's how to pimple butterfly was the same way because it's not a singles driven record so uh, I think it's I think it's just really amazing. We had a listening session for it in Nashville. The energy in the room was crazy. The expressions on people's faces when stuff you know as things unfolded in the project, and it's just Kendrick is giving you something no, that nobody else is providing in the culture right now. Yeah. So while mine is, I already said earlier, like I, said, I love this album. I thought it was dope. It's on that to pimp a butterfly lane, mm-hmm. but it's more of a convectional album, not a microwave album. Mm-hmm. Meaning it's good now, but it'll eventually get over it this is something like pimple butter to pimple butterfly over time it's gonna get better the reason why i said drake is a better artist than the two of them is simply this over 10 years and they don't have nothing to do with sales it's the way that he adapts to whatever the time is to keep himself relevant and i said mm-hmm. artist i say rapper that can i'm not gonna sit there and go back and forth for that um and somebody always gonna throw out that ghost writing shit, which whatever but to me i just feel that what makes um cole and kendrick from having great consistent albums is because to me i'm not because i do a lot of traveling maybe i'm not trying to be deep 100 percent of the time wearing my mm-hmm. dashiki sitting over right. there screaming fight the power all day or and i'm also sometimes like what makes future's album so good is 
I ain't got to know the lyrics. I just know I'm a vibe my head. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, one thing that J. Cole does very horrible is that when he sets his playlist, it doesn't flow. Kendrick at least flows. You know, like Father Tom, what was the one I named the track when he was arguing with old girl? Um, mm -hmm. We, we if, cry together. Yeah. It's always a story and it's always good. Um, and then with Drake is why I said this is because like Meek does this very good as well. They send you up top. And then, or it's a roller coaster, it goes up, goes up, goes up, and then it comes down gradually. So their albums and their music catalogs have always been something that you don't feel like you're in. When somebody say, give me that 08 Wayne, I mean that 045 Wayne or something like that, he can adapt better than anybody. Not only is he putting a million people on his music, his music evolves with whatever time we're in. And as much as people say it's commercial it's still always a bar somewhere in there but when i was asked you earlier about singles and all that he's smart enough to know what to do and i'm not saying they aren't that's just not what they want to make everybody has their yeah. own artistic views yeah, i just choice from an artist standpoint not a rapper from an mm -hmm. artist standpoint i say he's number one because 10 years he's had that game in a chokehold for 10 but plus that years that doesn't make you a great artist that makes you a great businessman could it be Art, both Mm, because I think those he are two has very different things. I think you can, I think you can be both, but I think mm -hmm. those ideas are two different ideas. I think if you ask an artist, you know, if we look at the history of what great artists are, we're not mm -hmm. going to say Basquiat was a great artist because he kept adapting the way that he painted to match what was going on at the time. You're going to mm -hmm. say Basquiat was a great artist because he had such a very unique voice and clear perspective of what he wanted to do, how he wanted it to look, and what he wanted to say. So when we're talking about art. I think what makes great artists is having such a handle on your voice and your identity that no mm -hmm. matter what the time period is, it stands up as exactly what it's supposed to be. Now, I think if you got somebody that's consistently, I think Drake has that though. I think Drake's art does stand up as the Drake thing. It's very clear and distinct as to what he does. But just to your argument, I think adapting with the times and changing what you do to be the hottest at the time, I don't think that makes you a great artist. I think that makes you a great business. I think business can be art because in order to make it somewhat, you have to present something to sell. You have to present something to catch somebody's eyes to make them want to give money, even if it's something small or something, whatever. That's not I art, should... though. That's commerce. That's not art. You don't have to sell art. Oh, if I want to, I... if I want to sit in the house and paint all day long. Yeah. That painting is a piece of art, regardless of if yeah. I sell it or not. I, I guess because I taught myself to be able to sell anything and everything, I can mm -hmm. turn on to anything. So I and I see people, even if I give a presentation, if I'm not selling something, let's just say I'm teaching something to somebody. Mm -hmm. I know how to be the crowd I'm going to. And but I'm mm -hmm. still myself, you know. So mm -hmm. I think that is and people are bad salesmen, people are bad public speakers, people are that. And I still think, even though he's adapted to the time, yeah, he still is Drake. Like he's still I agree. motherfucker singing, he's still the person, you know what I'm saying? Like he's still him 10 years later. And I still think that he sprinkles in, he just knows when to sprinkle in the um the rapping or whatever to go back to that old style it's just his lifestyle is also very much different and i still think that he still keeps a way to still be himself like in the laugh now cry later video he fallen on the ground being corny he's made corny a thing and i still think he's found a way to longigate it but that's just that's just me no that's true and it's subjective everybody's you know everybody's gonna get out of what they you know what they want to get out of it that's the cool thing about it is like it's just dope that we got the different options, you know, and it's not like to be at the top, yeah. you got to be doing it one type of way. It's like a lot mm -hmm. of different ways you can go at the game and still have massive success. Hell, and everybody wow. at the top, uh, everybody at the top of rap is real rappers too. Like ain't no yeah. slouches at the top of the rap. Yeah. Everybody can really rap. Wale's done the same since he got off MMG and he got to go back to being Wale. I feel like he's back out here. Same with Big Sean, you know, like that, like I said, when I said what you reminded me of, that was a, that was my era. That when I, I think we graduated the same year. That was the era of that Wale, yeah. Big Sean, Mac Miller, not Yellow Wolf, uh, Drake, um, Cuddy, all that, you know, and yeah. some of them exactly. And even to the extent J. Cole isn't the J. Cole that he started, but he's still very talented. But Wale and all them, like to all three, all of them in general are great because they are still them, 
and they can still have newer fan bases. But to me, that's why I put him up number one. And um, I need to hear. I'm gonna tell you why I need to hear your order for this. But who are the, your top five rappers of all time? Like your favorite? Jay Z at number one. Okay. Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar at number two. Mm-hmm. Um, Kanye West number three. Um, Hmm. Jay Electronica number four. No, 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 no. Strike that, strike that. Let me go back. Jay Z at one, Kendrick at two, Andre 3000 at three, Kanye at four, this list Jay Elect so, at five. This list is so disrespectful. Yeah. Two reasons why. You didn't put Wayne nowhere on there. I'm cool with you not putting Drake on there. Drake can be what? You did not put Wayne on there. Wayne, Wayne no should be on, on there. Wayne could be on there. I only get five, so it's tough. But uh Jay Electronic over Wayne. Mm, really Wayne should have been on one that. or two. But uh I, I, I but I know that. how people... I understand that. But Jay really... Electronic had changed me in a way, in a very specific way. You know what okay. I'm saying? Wayne changed me in a specific way. But Jay Elect, when it comes to where I'm at right now, and my five changes, but today. Jay Alec is influencing me now more than Wayne is. It I'm might change tomorrow. Man, money, 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 get a dollar in the uh, dick. We see <laughs> baby that crack motherfucker get us got a fix. Got money out the ass, no homo, but I'm rich. I'm gonna be crying. Okay. So the other one <laughs> what I was worried about, Jamel gave me on course that you were gonna put yourself in the top five. So it's mm. a, oh, you did not, and I was gonna see if you mm. actually did it, but um I respect nah. it. Um, I, I said, I was like, let's see if he do the die line, die line, die line. <laughs> right? I don't know nah. if you ever got to the back half of the of the um, the interview for when he was on, but he I put saw, you in there. Yeah, okay, yeah, yes, yeah. he put you in there uh, as a top five. He's like, I got to put my dog, my boss on. He cold. Let's see if he come in here and do the die line. You let us yeah. down, man. You let, no. Nah, yeah, I know, I know. But, but I don't like to, I like to, I like to reach for something, man. If I put myself in the top five, like, I don't have a, I'm not reaching. I want to get better. You know, I feel like I'm one of the best in the world, but like, I always got to see, like, I love hearing something that's like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Like when I listen to the new Kendrick album, it's like, oh, okay. I can learn something from this. I'm like a real student of this thing. And I love hearing stuff that's like further out than mine is currently because I can grow and I can like come up with a new, something new that somebody else isn't doing. So yeah, I, li- I like to aspire to something, man. Let me have dreams, nigga, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Electronic has not been in Wayne, though. I understand what he did for you. Jay Electronic is that is your opinion. I like it. Like I said, I, 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 you always set yourself up when you ask somebody something. And then my, one of my homeboys uh, had told me this yesterday. He was like, I put CLB as a classic Drake album. And I put it up there for this reason. Wow. I said it, I said it, and I didn't put it for hits because it still falls in the bottom tier. But I put, like I said, longevity, adapting to the time, and there's still remnants. And to be this long, and he sold what six hundred thirty—that's popularity. But he you sold. True, you a true fan? You a true? Fan. Well, like you said, like you said, Electronica is yours. Yeah. That nigga was weird to everybody, but he still had <laughs> something. So when he came out, I went through the same phase. It was the same with Kanye, which is why when I had to break away from Kanye, it hurt so much. Like mm-hmm. I was a tweener, wasn't really gang banging all that. But you know, I knew a couple niggas, and I wasn't no like geeky person, but mm-hmm. I was stupid. So it was yeah. they made it cool to like like comic books, like um playing outside, like being 12 or 14, 15 at the time that you are. And mm-hmm. on top of that, I didn't have to wear a knee chair or anything. I could wear normal ass clothes, and if they weren't baggy or whatever, or if I wanted to sweet talk somebody, they were the people that did it, you know. So they were kind of impactful. Kanye is in my top five, even if I stop fucking with him. Um, mm-hmm. But that's kind of why um, maybe I arrived for more than um, the average person. Plus, if anybody wanted to, I can go bar for bar where they can match up. But when you have a lot of music out, it's easier to do everything. Um, yeah. Let everybody know. Um, let everybody know for the um, how to get in touch for the Black the Assembly, the Quarterly Assembly coming up. BlackNashvilleAssembly.org. You can go there to sign up. It's right there on the front page. You sign up, you'll get the text messages, the emails, and you'll you'll be all set. And let everybody know how to find contraband. 
Uh, you go to MikeFloss.com or you can just look up Mike Floss on any streaming platform that you use. It'll be right there. And your album date, do you have a date for it? No, no album date just yet. But when okay. it comes, you definitely going to know. You know, any, can you spill any features that's going to be in there or you ain't got the track list out yet either? I ain't got nothing. All right, I well, you definitely know if it, when as soon as it come out, I'm going to be definitely there uh, spinning the wheels. We, I appreciate you coming um, on and shooting the shit with me. And this has definitely been a long time coming, but I'm glad we finally got to make it work. Um, For sure. I appreciate anything that you need to promote, or whether it's album wise, whether it's Black Nashville assembly wise, let me know. Y'all could pop up here or shoot it to my story. I go there and go. I'm coming to the next listening party. Um, don't play, don't let's not. Can we have a, like an even or out? Because I got to listen to stuff two or three times. And if y'all niggas is getting wise deep the first listen, man, did you feel it? I don't want to lie. I'd be like, man, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, de- I definitely want to um, come to one of the um listening parties that you do uh we've we've talked multiple times so hopefully i can get that again i'll definitely be at another black nashville assembly let everybody know your handles and how to get in touch with you uh, on any social media platform is mike floss music you just follow me on there man i keep i keep the whole movement going yeah and i'll give everybody your cell phone and i'm playing but uh <laughs> <laughs> this has been another episode of the 8192 podcast where we always keep 100 we want to thank the guy the dog the homeboy mike floss for coming on and we will holler at y'all later make sure if y'all got any questions to email us at the 8 more than 92 podcast at gmail.com for your questions make sure you also go on there our youtube page and check out sorry that the video came out late it was because youtube was bullshitting but i put the episode out on time um, make sure y'all check out the merch at the 8 more than 92 podcast at shopify.com and then also make sure that you check out the instagram page 8mt92 underscore podcast and we will holler at y'all later peace that's a mouthful we will holler at y'all later peace back in this bitch uh no we full attack in this shit uh you know the full mac came equipped uh.